this is the first video in Unit 4 on chemical reactions. Here we're going to really delve into what a reaction is, how do you deal with them, and really kind of combine the things that we've talked about in the last couple units. So for this unit, uh, for th I'm sorry, for this video, the only objective we're going to really be dealing with is balancing a chemical equations. So same thing, here's the outline for the whole unit. This is where we're going to be focusing. So before we begin, we have to really go back and just talk about a, one of the scientific laws that we skimmed over earlier on, and that is the law of conservation of matter. Um, occasionally it's called the law of conservation of mass, either way. And this just meant it says that matter cannot be created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. It's just going to change form. And so it's, you know, kind of like, for example, if you were um, to burn a candle at home, it looks like the wax starts off kind of large, and then it slowly ekes away until you're left with, you know, just a little stub of candle. Um, that candle is not destroyed. It's changing from the really complicated wax that we actually um, talk about a lot more in the organic unit later on. And it's converting into carbon dioxide, some soot, uh, the, the black stuff that's around like the glass of the candle holders, that kind of thing. And so if matter can't be created or destroyed, then every chemical reaction that we talk about has to have the same number of t and type of atom conserved on the left and on the right. And so whenever we talk about a chemical reaction, we're going to do it with a chemical equation. And this is one of the reasons why I really wanted you guys to get comfortable with Math Editor because of this. So here we've got a chemical equation. Now, you don't know how to name this yet, but that's okay. I'm going to tell you that this is propane, this is oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water, you do know. Now, the way that we write a chemical re reaction is we have the reactants or the things that were our starting material on the left, our products or our ending material on the right. And then we have this arrow here. Now that arrow really just means reacts to produce. So here we have propane reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide or water or propane plus five oxygen a reacting to produce three carbon dioxide and four waters. Now we can also talk about each type of atom. Okay, so matter isn't created or destroyed here. It's got to be conserved. And that means that our chemical equations have to be what we call balanced, meaning whatever you begin with, you end with. So we're going to be able to con confirm this, um, we learned in the last couple units how to write formulas like carbon dioxide is CO2. Well, we can't change the subscript. If we changed that to like CO3, that's not C carbon dioxide anymore. We can't adjust the formula, but what we can do is we can change the coefficients or the big numbers to change how many of each of these molecules we have in the reaction themselves, okay? We can also add subscripts to indicate the state of matter. So like if it was a gas, we could add a G. Uh, we could add uh, something if it was a liquid or a solid. So here, let's just check first that this is balanced. So we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now the way that I do it is I go through all everything and I count. I've got carbon, there's a subscript three, so that's three carbons. There's eight hydrogens here, five oxygens, each one with two, five times two is 10 oxygen atoms. Now on the right, I have three with a subscript one, so three times one is three carbons. Over here I have four waters, but each water has two hydrogens, so four times two is eight. Now oxygen, oxygen is hard to me because it has, it's in both molecules here. And so 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 times 1 is 4, 6 plus 4 is 10. So this is actually balanced because we have 3 carbons, we have 8 hydrogens, 
and 10 oxygen atoms on both sides of the arrow. So we're not creating or destroying anything, we are just changing it from propane and oxygen to carbon dioxide and water. Now the way we read this, and we're not getting into quantitative stuff until next unit, and that's when we'll deal with, you know, how do you count moles, how do you kill, count molecules, that kind of thing. For right now, and of course the alarm, um, it is just a matter of, okay, so if we look at when can we balance or how do we balance an equation, what's going to happen is we're going to get an equation and I'm going to say if it's not balanced, balance it. And what you can do is you can only adjust these coefficients. Now, a couple of notes. Every once in a while in a text, or really in any text, they'll try to be like, oh, let's use fractions. One half and two, ha uh, two fifths and, I don't know, one half, something like that. Um, I will not do that. I like the simplest whole number ratio, okay? So when we balance, our coefficient should be in the simplest whole number ratio, okay? One, an understood one, you notice we don't write this, but an understood one, five, three, four. You can't divide that by anything to get another set of whole numbers, okay? Let me show you what I mean here. So what we're gonna do is when we get the next problem, we're going to begin by making a tally of all the atoms in the reaction, just like I did. I usually do it right under the arrow uh, just to save myself room and so I can compare that way. I don't know. I, then we're going to add coefficients to get the atoms to balance. You can't change the subscripts, guys. If you change the subscripts, you're changing the formulas and it's not the original reaction. So the only thing you can do is change these coefficients must be the lowest common denominator of whole numbers here. Uh, I am not going to try and trip you up with fractions. I don't like fractions because that seems to test more than one learning outcome. Now just as a big tip guys, balance hydrogen and oxygen last. In the last example oxygen was in more than one molecule and so that makes it kind of hard to balance at the beginning. Uh, it's just easiest if you start with everything else and end with hydrogen and oxygen. So let's balance this guy. Here we've got magnesium chloride reacting with silver nitrate to produce magnesium nitrate and silver chloride. By the way, it's in your reading but I'm going to go ahead and point it out now. Aqueous means that it is dissolved in water. AQ means aqueous which means dissolved in water. It is not a liquid itself but it is a solid that you have taken and dissolved. Kind of like when you dissolve sugar in tea or you dissolve uh, salt, sodium chloride, in your water when you're making pasta. It's not that it's a liquid. It's not liquid salt. It's salt dissolved in liquid water. Okay? So um, with that in mind, let's go ahead and balance this. Now another note that I'm going to go ahead and make, and I probably should have done one without polyatomic ions first, but I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and say there's two ways to do this. Now we can do magnesium, chlorine, silver, nitrogen, and oxygen. But you see how nitrate is the same here and here. I mean we can do nitrogen and oxygen, but because nitrate is going to stay the same on both sides, I'm going to leave that as one thing. So when I balance, I'm going to balance magnesium, chlorine, silver, and the nitrate ion. Okay? Now if you don't want to do it this way, that's fine. Do it however you are most comfortable with. Uh, it's just, I like less work, so I'm going to do it as the nitrate ion. So here I have magnesium. There's no subscript, so I'm going to say that I only have one. Chlorine, I have a subscript of two, so there's two here one silver. There's no parentheses around this, so I only have one polyatomic ion here. On the right, I have one magnesium, one chlorine, one silver, and two nitrates. See the parentheses with the subscript too. 
So this is not balanced and it's really up to you where you start. Um, I typically start at the top and work my way down but I'm kind of OCD. So see how like we've got one magnesium I'm gonna make it so that I have two chlorines. The only way I can do that is by adding a two in front of silver chloride. Now this two applies to both the silver and to the chlorine. So that makes two here and two here. Let me get rid of my arrows for a second. Now at this point magnesium is balanced, chlorine is balanced, but I need silver and nitrate to be balanced. And so to do that I need two silvers, two nitrates. I'm going to add a two here. Now this two applies to both the silver and to this nitrate ion. So I have two and two. And now we are balanced. We have one magnesium on both sides, two chlorines on both sides, two silvers, <laughs> and two nitrates. Okay? Now the way that you would read this would be one magnesium chloride reacts with two silver nitrates to produce magnesium nitrate and two silver chlorides. Um, this is aqueous, 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 and solid. Now at the end of this unit we actually get to talk about how do you know that that's going to form a solid, but we're not there yet. There we go. Now this is an, um, another acid base, uh, another, well it's an acid base reaction, but it's another one where you have polyatomic ions. Now same thing, if you are more comfortable doing it as H, S, O, and Na, good for you. You do it that way. It's totally fine. As long as you're getting the right answer, I don't care. Um, but technically, you see how oxygen is in everything? You see how hydrogen is in three of the four? That just seems like a pain to me. And so I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to keep my polyatomic ions because they're the same on both sides. See how I've got sulfate here and sulfate here? Then I've got H and OH. This is water, but remember this can also be written kind of like that. Okay? So again, if you don't like to do it this way, that's okay. But I'm going to try and do it my way just because I hate extra work. So this is H, then we have sulfate, then we have sodium, and then we have hydroxide. Now, um, I'm going to change my pen color. I'm going to try and keep these nice and visible for everyone. On this side, we have two hydrogens. This hydrogen is actually part of the hydroxide ion. It is not a hydrogen here. It's a hydroxide. Then we have one sulfate, one sodium, and one hydroxide. On the right, we have two sodiums, one sulfate, because it's not in parentheses. And then remember, this is not two hydrogens. It's one hydrogen, one hydroxide. Okay. Now, in a second, I'll come back and show you how it would look with the atoms themselves, but I'm going to do it this way first. So this is not balanced. Now, remember, we want to do hydrogen and oxygen last. So I'm going to focus here on the sodium. The sodium says two on the right, one on the left. I'm going to add a two here. That too applies to both sodium and hydroxide. So we're going to have two sodiums and two hydroxides. Now to fix my hydrogen and hydroxide, I'm going to add a two here. I should have had a space. But if I add a two in front of the water, it applies to both this hydrogen and to the hydroxide. Um, so I have two and two and it's balanced. So the way that we would read this would be two sulfuric acids, I'm, I'm sorry, no, no, sulfuric acid reacts with two sodium hydroxide to produce one sodium sulfate and two waters. Well say you don't like to do it this way. Maybe you really want to do it as the elements. Okay, so let me show you what that would look like here. And if you do it's fine. I'm totally okay with that. I'm not grading, you know, how you got the answer if you did it the same way. I'm grading, do your units cancel if you're doing that kind of math? And are you getting to the right answer? Is your logic correct? Okay, so let's go through and count this again. Now for hydrogen, 
here we're doing it element. So we have hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, and sodium. For hydrogens on the left, I have two plus this one over here, so I have three. I have one sulfur, four oxygens and sulfate, plus the one in hydroxide, so that's a total of five, plus one sodium. Now on the right, I have two sodiums, one sulfur, four, five oxygens, four plus one over here is five, and then two hydrogens. Yes, okay. So now, same thing, I'm going to start with my sodiums. So what I'm going to do with sodium is I'm going to try and get them the same. The only way I can do that is by adding a 2 in front of sodium hydroxide. Oops, dropped my pen. Where'd it go? Um, so now, this 2 applies to both this, well, to all three, to sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen there. And so we have to recount everything. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we've got two sodiums. Now I've got two oxygens here, two times this one, but also four. So I've got two and four, or six total oxygens. And I've got two hydrogens over here, and then now two over here. So two plus two is going to be four. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look at what else we can work with. Because sodium is balanced, all we're left with is hydrogen and oxygen. And so to balance our hydrogen, I'm going to choose hydrogen, uh, honestly, just because it's at the top, you know. Um, I have four and I have two. So I'm going to add a two here. Two times two is four but this two also applies to the oxygen, so we have to recount our oxygens. So we have two in water, two times one is two, plus this four in the sulfate is six. Fours cancel, ones are the same, sixes are the same, twos are the same, so we're, we're balanced. And so same thing here, now we have a sulfuric acid reacting with two sodium hydroxides to produce a sodium sulfate and two waters. Um, right. So either way works, choose what works best for you. So here's another one. To me, um, if I'm remembering right, this is a challenge one. And so I kind of wanted to give you this example too. So here we have CH and O, no polyatomic ions, so we have to do it atomically. Um, let's go ahead and count. On the left, we have four, uh, four carbons. 10 hydrogens, 2 oxygens. On the right, we have 1 carbon, 2 hydrogens, 2 plus 1 is 3 oxygens. Now, here's where it gets kind of tricky. We are going to go ahead and balance our carbons first. We do that by adding a 4. And now we have to recount our oxygens because this 4 counts, uh, applies to both carbon and oxygen. So we have 4 times 2 is 8 and then one over here, so eight plus one is gonna be nine oxygens. Now, again, I'm kinda OCD, so I typically just go straight down the line uh, for better or worse, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and balance my hydrogens, and I'm gonna do that by adding a five. Five times two is 10. Now, it also applies to oxygen, so I have four times two is eight, plus five times one, is 5. 8 plus 5 is 13, I believe. Now, here's why it's a tricky question. There is no way to get, to put a number here to apply, to multiply by 2 to get a 13. It's just not possible. 13 isn't divisible by 2. There's a couple of ways to think about this. For me, the easiest thing to say is if you get stuck or if it looks like it's just not possible, multiply everything by 2 and then start over. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to erase my 4 and my 5. Well, actually, I guess I shouldn't do that. 
I'll leave it here for a second. Um, 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 2, this should now be an 8. And 5 times 2 is now going to be a 10. So let's go ahead and recount everything. 2 times 4 is 8 carbons. 2 times 10 is 20 hydrogens. Um, 2 times 2 is 4 oxygens. On the right, 8 times 1 is 8. 10 times 2 is 20. And then here, 8 times 2 is 16. And then 10 um, oxygens here. 16 plus 10 is 26. So the only thing that isn't balanced is my oxygen. Well at this point oxygen has got a subscript 2 so we just need to multiply something by 2 to get 26. And so this is why you're allowed a calculator. 13 times 2 is 26. And so we can add that there. Now at this point these look like pretty big numbers but there's nothing that I can divide here to get a smaller set. It's not like 2, 14, 8, and 10 where they could all be divided by 2. This is the smallest whole number ratio. And so this balanced equation would read 2, well this is butane even though you don't know that, 2C4H10 plus 13 oxygens react to produce 8 carbon dioxides and 10 waters. So the whole point of this is that when we go into talking about chemical reactions, we're going to be able to talk about the reactants and the products and we're going to do it with a balanced equation. Now you have a lot of practice that is um, available under your supplemental homework. There's also some questions in your mom in your sample test. Um, remember that you're going to be entering the simplest whole number ratio and so it's always a good idea to balance those on paper first but if you have any questions, just let me know.